have a special gift for you for sticking around this long and making it to this video. We have a free giveaway, actually a couple of things we're going to give away. The first is a brush kit that I use personally when I'm outlining and shading and coloring my designs during the rest of this video. So if you want to have the same brushes that I'm using throughout the rest of this video, go to the link in the description and download them for free. Welcome back to the Tattoo Smart Procreate Basics tutorial series. In the last video, I accidentally printed out this rose outline big enough to cover a whole giant back piece. So if you missed that, go back and watch the previous video and see how I did that. Um, but enough about that. Here's the deal. You need to do a value study. Doing a line drawing is great and printing a stencil. You can just wing it, right? But as a tattoo artist, mistakes happen, right? We, it happens when we wing it. It happens when we don't know exactly where we're going to put the black, where we're going to put the shading, where the colors go. So at the very least, if you can do a value study and you can do it very quickly using digital design, iPad, Procreate, all of that's going to make it super easy. So there's really no excuse to not do a value study before you start every tattoo, at least until you get really comfortable with the subject matter that you're working on. So I found long ago and I see it in my studio when we do value studies, when we do color studies, the work just gets better. So if you're looking to unlock the next level in your tattooing, doing a value study is one of the ways that you can definitely start to get there. Today we're going to go over this technique where we start with a perfectly clean outline that we made in Procreate, and then we quickly add values to that line drawing in a way where we can get back to the line drawing to print a stencil with no problems. So it's unlike the way it would be on paper. No extra steps, this is the fastest way to make a line drawing turn into a value study in Procreate, so stick around for this video. Also, we are giving away a free brush set and free color palettes, link in the description, so don't miss that. Let's jump into the lesson. Last time we worked on a clean line drawing and we used brushes included with Procreate, but since you can now use the brushes that I made, these are gonna be a lot easier to work with. These brushes I'm sharing with you are the ones I use to outline my tattoos every day. And these are the same brushes that Tattoo Smart contributors use when they make flash stamps for our company. These are the brushes that I recommend using to outline your tattoo designs with because they have stabilization, they have streamline, they are locked in to specific sizes. So you're always going to have your fine liner, your small liner, your mid liner, your bold liner, your fat liner ready to go. And you can start to learn what those sizes are and you have consistency from one drawing to the next. Get the brush kit and follow along with the lesson. Today, it's gonna to be all about how we can do a value study really quickly once we've already completed our line drawing. But these liners are going to be your everyday go-to kit for outlining tattoos. I'm even going to go ahead and pull this kit out and re-outline this rose again using my favorite brushes instead of the stock brush from Procreate that we used earlier. So I'll time-lapse that so you don't have to see the whole process. But I wanna start with a line drawing that I'm really happy with. So give me a few minutes to fix this up It'll go fast for you. For me, it'll take a little while. And when we're all done, we'll go ahead and jump into how to do the value study extremely fast. Okay, so now we have a new and improved line drawing made using these pre-made locked-in brush sizes that go all the way from fine liner to small liner, mid liner, bold liner, fat liner, and heavy liner. This brush set also includes some noise shaders, which I really like to use to shade in designs that are really gonna work as a stencil but there's some other stuff in here. Noise shaders, fine and bold, very useful. We've also got the Magic Spit Shader, which is a really awesome brush that I created for the Spit Shade set. And that works really well with this running blend. So you always set that to the Smudge Tool. Select Running Blend from the brush set on Smudge Tool. And then you can use that to blend out the colors from the Spit Shade and create all those nice washes. So that's really fun. And then finally, there's a soft airbrush in there, just a really general airbrush tool that I like to use a lot. And we're gonna use that with today's lesson. So, so here we are, we have a clean line drawing on its own layer. And we'll go ahead and delete our original line drawing layer. So we just have the sketch and then we have our line drawing we are on a white background. We can change the background color again real quick. I mentioned I'm going to include some palettes in the free giveaway section for you. So this is one, two, let's see. 
This is one, two, three, four palettes, which are all of my favorite Eternal ink colors. And you can actually click over here on cards and read the, the name of the color from Eternal ink. And so these are all the colors that I use every day in the studio. These are the ones that I have the most experience with using. And I think that they're the ones that I will continue using in the future. And, um, you know, so more or less, this is my exact palette that I love from Eternal Ink that I've been using for years. And also in here, we have the Tattoo Smart Skin Tone set. So you can use that to actually apply a background color that's most similar to your client's skin tone. And then we have the Tattoo Smart Gray Value set, which is 10 gray values in neutral, warm, and cool. So let's start with applying a skin tone, which you can now do easily because you can follow the link in the description and get all of that for free. Tap on background color after you've installed these palettes and just choose the skin tone that you like. Let's do something like that. And so now we're working on a medium skin tone set here in our background color. And that's gonna give us a really good idea of how these values actually look on in an actual tattoo. And to start adding values, we always want to add a new layer here. So let's add a layer and rename it values like that. It's a good practice to always move the values and any color layers directly underneath your lines layer. So it's always going to work best if your lines are sitting at the very top of your layer stack. So you can just move layers around by clicking and hovering and you can drag them wherever you want them. So we've got our lines layer above our values layer. Just to be sure we don't mess up our lines, I wanna go ahead and swipe on lines and click lock, which is gonna create a lock on our lines layer so we can't mess it up. Now our values layer is where we're gonna actually add the values. And we want to select inside of each of these areas so that the color will just drop right in there. I'll show you how this works. So let's say you choose a gray, something like a middle gray, you could get it from here or if you've downloaded this palette, you can just choose it from here, something like this one. Now you've got this gray. So you can grab this color puck and drag it over and drop a color on the whole canvas. But what we'd like it to do is to actually stay inside of some of these lines. But we don't want that to happen on the lines layer because we wanna keep that clean, it's locked, we don't wanna mess with it, right? Because we need to print out a stencil later. So what we'll do here is go over to our lines layer and tap it and then select the word reference here. You'll see the word reference appear on the lines layer, which means that when we color drop on the values layer, it's going to pay attention to the lines layer and it's gonna reference that. Okay, so with your lines layer set to reference and your values layer underneath it, grab a neutral gray and just drag it over and drop it in. It should fill the entire area and it should look nice and clean on the edges. You can keep doing this and if you'd like click continue filling and you can just keep using that same gray and tapping into multiple areas now I noticed there it did something unexpected it actually jumped over a line which is not what we want so let's talk about how to correct that there's a setting with color drop called threshold which can control whether or not it jumps over lines or not so after you tap, if it does something unexpected, don't lift your Apple Pencil, but slide back to the left and you'll see the threshold number going down. So now that it's a little bit lower, it's about 33% right now, and it's working much better. And so for each different value area that I want, I can choose a different value and try to get it close to what I want it to be. So maybe try switching to a darker value, bring that over here and oops, now it jumped outside of that leaf and over in here. And the reason that happened is because I didn't connect my lines. So that's one thing to always pay attention to. Make sure that you connect your outlines completely so you can use this method. So I'm gonna go back to my lines layer real quick. And it is currently unlocked because I accidentally unlocked it. I'll switch to a black and just go back to the liner that I was using. I think it was bold liner. I'm going to go ahead and connect that back up on the lines layer. And let's see if that fixes my problem. So I'll go ahead and lock this layer back so I don't mess with it anymore. Back over here, select a darker gray. There we go. Exactly. That's what I wanted. 
So I'll keep adding, continue filling, boom, 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 boom. I like that. I'll put that there. Let's see. Let's do a lighter gray over in these guys. We'll add some black shading on top of this later. Now we have a very basic plan for the values and we can decide if we want to move these things around a little bit. Notice there isn't any black in here yet. We'll do that in a separate step. But this is a good place to get to where you've got everything inside the design has some sort of gray in it. If you'd like to see how these grays would actually sit on this skin tone a little more realistically, come over into the layers and look for this little N on your values layer. Tap that in and you can change the layer blending mode to something else. One that works really good for this, I think, is multiply layer blending mode. So now these grays are actually sitting on top of that skin tone that we selected in a more realistic way. And you can kind of test that out here. You can test that out here by changing the background color to a different, say, darker skin tone. And this is how you can replicate the way that tattoos sit on different skin colors and really start to plan your tattoos more effectively. And this works with color as well. So we'll leave it there. And now we've got a really, really simple, really fast value study, but let's take it up a notch. Let's add some shading and some highlights to this and start to flesh it out a little bit more. So we'll add a new layer and we'll call this black for the black shading. And this time I'm going to go back to the RA brush kit, the free brush kit you can get with the link in the description. And I'm going to choose the soft brush. This is just a soft airbrush that I like. And switch over here and pick a black. Yeah, that works. Now what we want to do is make some selections inside of our line layer. We can go ahead and lock our values layer and the only layer we're going to work on now is the black layer. To make a selection, head over here to this S looking icon and tap that. Make sure that it's set up the same way it looks here, which is going to be, we're set to automatic, add. So automatic and add are blue. And if we do that, we should be able to start tapping inside of areas that we'd like to add some black shading to. And it's going to select only those areas. And now we've got our soft brush here and we wanna make the size probably close to, that's a little too big. So just kind of using a big airbrush, but not quite coloring in the area, but coloring next to it, we can kind of let the overlap of the airbrush kind of leak out there. This is a quick way to get that black shading in there. It's not too precise, but sort of gives us an idea. Um, I'm, I am noticing one problem here, which brings me back to that threshold setting. We want to adjust that for our selection as well as our color drop. So let's get back here and do that. So the first time we select, tap in an area, and then if you slide to the right, you'll see at the very top, it says selection threshold 52%. The higher we can get that number without jumping, the better, because that's going to avoid that little ugly pixel edge to our area. So with that area selected, We'll see if that was any better. We'll just do it one at a time here. And that fixed the problem. So we no longer see those ugly pixels along the edge. So let's just go through here. Looks like we're jumping over a line here. So I wanna fix that. We're a little high on the threshold. Let's lower it down. Let's test that again. Good, that's what we want. So around 50%. Good. So you can just do these one at a time if you'd like. Gives you a little bit finer control. Oops.
Now if you want to get away from that airbrush look, you can also use that magic spit shader brush that I showed you earlier. It's in the free kit that we're giving away. Let's see what that looks like. So using the magic spit shader, it just adds a little bit more spit shade texture to the edge. Looks really good. Kind of looks like a little bit more like whip shading or more, more traditional look, you know. It's pressure sensitive, so the lighter touch will yield a different effect. Very nice. So we'll just go here and add my black shading everywhere I want it. You can do two at a time to speed things up. Okay, there we have all the black shading done with the Magic Spit Shader brush that comes free with the RA brush kit that we're giving away, link in the description. And we can see how it's going to actually look on the skin tone as a black and gray monochromatic tattoo. In the next video, we are going to learn how to quickly add colors to this. We can add the reds and the rose, the greens and the leaves. We can change those colors really quickly until we're totally happy with the color palette. So stick around for the next video. Don't forget to use the link in the description to get the free brush kit and free color palettes that you're gonna love to use. And it will help you as you follow along in this tutorial series. I'm Russ Abbott. This is the Tattoo Smart Procreate Basics tutorial series, and we'll see you in the next video.